YouTube. What's good, guys? It's your boy TD, and I'm back again with another live, guys. And this morning, this live is going to be on five must-have tight ends that could be lead winners. So, guys, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This is cutting edge content. I said what I said. This is cutting edge content. So, guys, before we get started, I'm going to talk about a few things that I want y'all to be ready for that I got coming up. First of all, I want to talk about my draft guide. That draft guide is going to be $24.99. But if you are a Phenom member of this channel, you, you will be able to get that for free. So I know you'll be on the Phenom, but in order to stay active and be able to watch that draft guide throughout the draft, you just got to stay on the Phenom tier throughout the season. So if you, if you don't sign up for the Phenom uh, tier or you don't pay that uh, membership fee for that month, then you won't be able to see it. So that's the deal that I'm offering for Phenom tiers. But if you just want to buy it and, and then you don't want to be part of the member of the channel, that's fine. It's going to be $24.99. And you're talking about cutting edge content? That's going to be cutting edge content. I'm talking about a zero RB list. I'm talking about scrambling quarterback list. I'm talking about... Guys who you should be drafting in the first round, I'm talking about sleepers. Very Occam Razor. Very simple, but dynamic. Moving on, guys, I have a Phenom Fonder model. And me and Fantasy Football Key, Alex, we, that's something that we have came up with together. And we're going to be offering that on the, as far as on a Patreon. So if you want to be able to get that, we haven't came up with the price yet, but that's coming. And you're going to be using that to help you draft these rookies, right? Now, if you are just a redraft guy, you might not want to use it, but I still think it's going to be great data. And you can be able to take my data and compare it throughout the past and see what guys that I hit on and what guys I was high over over guys like was top five picks. He's like, everybody might say, I like this guy, this guy. I may have guys on this speed now, find a list that could be – you know, you might, why? I can't believe you had this guy high. Like, I might have Amara as a top five on the Phenom Finder, but he might have been, like, top 20 on other people's list as far as rookies. So I'm going to be offering that guy. People want to get that. And I believe this is going to be huge. I believe my draft guy is going to be huge. I believe my Phenom Finder, I believe this is one of, maybe might be the most cutting edge as far as finding players in the whole industry. And I stand by that. I'm talking about professional scouts. I'm talking about professional coaches. Because I'm looking at my results and it's hitting, right? Man, it ain't perfect, but I believe it's high. Um, it's a high percentage of really good hits, like fourth round, fifth round players that are being elite on this list. So, guys, make sure you get ready to get that. Moving on to some news. Before we get on to the five rookie tight ends, or well, not rookie tight ends, I'm sorry, but my five tight ends that I like this year. Um, Rasheed Rice got, has got, got arrested. Rasheed Rice got arrested. The guys, they're going to find a wide receiver in this draft. They're going to probably get multiple wide receivers if they don't trade for a wide receiver. So, guys, some of these rookie wide receivers that's going kind of late in the first round might go to Kansas City, and I'm excited. I want those guys over maybe some of the top five guys like Marvin Harrison because if you're playing with Pat Mahomes and they don't really need you to be outstanding, but you're just another guy, but you are a good talent, I believe that you can be special. I believe that you can be special on that offense. Listen, Clyde edwards Alaire wasn't top liberal in his first year. He was a top 12 running back in his first year, and we know his talent is not elite. So imagine if they get an elite guy, like, for example, Torrey Franklin, Brian Thomas, Odunzi, um, McClarkey, some of these guys that are good route runners that they need, if they bring these guys in, I think it's going to be tremendous. Rasheed Rice is probably going to miss six to eight games this year. If he even plays this year, we don't know if Kansas City cuts him or not. I don't believe they're going to they cut him, but I don't know if he plays this year or if he's fantasy value. Another thing, guys, Jonathan Brooks, the, I think this is the Texas running back that a lot of you have been having on your list. I don't get him because he's been hurt. They said he's going to be ready for week one. They said the same thing about Kendra Miller. I'm not big into that. I don't want any hurt, injured running backs. Now, if he comes in and he's throwing balling, I can change. But I'm not going to put my stock into a guy who has a hurt, you have the knee injury as a running back. I need you to be healthy. That's why I didn't touch Bree Charles last year. But this year, Bree Charles is my number one running back. I said what I said. Give y'all a little caveat to my draft guide. 
Uh, Retail also was on the Phenom Fonda, too. So uh, let's see if there's any other news out there, guys, that I want to talk about uh, that I think is good content. Nick Chubb took a pay cut. That lets you know that he probably ain't going to be the same player that he's been in the past. So Nick Chubb did take a pay cut. Uh, what else is going on, guys, before we get started on the high? Five, five tight ends that I like going into 2024. Yeah, that's about it. I talked about CeeDee Lamb may miss voluntary workouts, and that makes me nervous because usually when you miss voluntary workouts and you got a contract dispute, usually you can get a soft tissue injury. And I don't want any of my players starting off like a Cooper Cup did, right? I'm not saying Cooper Cup is the same situation, but Cooper Cup didn't play that much in uh, the summer and spring, and he – they got a late start. So I don't want my fantasy players being that way. So let's see. Let me go to the comment section and see what's going on here. We got CHB in the house. He says cutting edge content. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Aaron Holloway in the building. Always showing support. What's up, Burr Burr? This morning, TD. And Harami said, what's up, TD? What's up, fam? It's early over here in Cali. Yes, sir, Burr Burr. I see you on the grind. Because it's like... 7 o'clock, 7.30 in Cal. Yes, sir. Appreciate everybody being here. Always showing support. And yes, Harami says, hit the lights, guys. Get the lights up. Hit the like button. Okay. So let's get started. And I'm going to start from 5 to 1, and then I got a couple bonus. So guys, that's going to stay here and watch the whole live. I got a couple bonus, guys, that I'm going to talk about, too. But my number five guy that I'm picking up, and this is kind of easy. Maybe you might not want to take him at the five position. Maybe you want to take him number one. It's going to be Travis Kelsey. So, guys, um, when you use age, it's like a depreciation on a car. So you might have a Lamborghini, and it might be a very expensive car. But once it depreciates, it might be better to go get a cheaper car. Travis Kelsey is age. They're not going to run him into the ground. He's not getting 12, 13 targets a game like he did two years ago. That's no longer their model. What they want to do is save him for the playoffs, make sure they win some games. He's going to have some 100-yard games in the regular season. But when, how much value, it's going to be too volatile for me to count on that. So I believe that you should get Travis Kelsey if he falls to you for the right price. Don't take no Travis Kelsey as a number one. Oh, my God. Travis Kelsey. Now, listen, if you can get Travis Kelsey after you can stack your lineup, then you're killing it. But if you get Travis Kelsey in the first round and you got a number one wide receiver, don't come to me talking about, oh, my God, Travis Kelsey let me down. No, he didn't let you down. You got to understand what Kansas City wants to do right there at, the, at this point in time of their career with Pat Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Travis Kelsey. They want to win championships. So they're not trying to wear anybody out during the regular season. These young players, they're going to wear him out. Out of them, Pacheco, they, they're going to wear him out. They might even draft another guy. Um, if Shane Rice was still there, they were going to wear him out. Whatever wide receiver coming there, Marquise Brown, they're going to get plenty of targets. But they not wearing Travis Kelsey out week three. So I believe that you should fade Travis Kelsey and just let him be a, a just a, any regular tight end as a top five tight end. Don't count him to be some extraordinary tight end that he is in a uh, passing game. That's not what he's going to be anymore. They want to win championships. I can just watch any championship team from the Yankees all the way down from the Chicago Bulls, Lakers. When they got older and they was just on a championship run like the uh, Warriors, they saved their guys, right? They, they didn't play every night. Um, Right now, Stephen Curry, he don't play every night. He he plays about 35 minutes. Now, they get ready. Now, he's going to be playing about 40 minutes. They get ready to go for the playoffs. So, now he's going to be playing 40, 42 minutes. And that's what's going to happen. So, I don't want to beat that. But that's what I want to tell you about Travis Kelsey. Moving on to my number four guy. Uh, let me see. Uh, CHB says, heck no, um, on Kelsey. Right, right. And he said, what round, though? Man, don't – so this is what I wanted to also tell y'all. Don't worry about the rounds. And I know I'm not doing it because I don't know the round. I, I, I do mock drafts all the time. It's depending on your team. If you go basic off of – if you base players off rounds, it sets you up to take guys that you leaving on the board that you should be drafting this guy over him. So 
don't get to around six and I said take Travis Kelsey, you take Travis Kelsey, but Zay Flowers is out there and you and, and you can have a top of the line number three wide receiver or a flex plan. So it just depends on what's left on the board. That's why I told y'all, you need to get me with a consultation for your draft. And I can explain that to you. You can see my draft guide is not going to tell you who to pick each round because that's you're going to be leaving. Got somebody going to get faded. Cook and Nicole might make it to the second round. You're going to automatically take a uh, guy because I said take him to the second round. Well, Puka Nicole is still there and he was a first round talent. So it just depends on, on who's still out there. Me, I'm taking Travis Kelsey after these guys are gone off the board that I'm going to read to you. Now, now, before if you want to take them before then, that's on you. But after these guys are gone, then whatever round you in, then you can take them. That's just my, that's the way I look at it. I don't want to do it by a round and say, okay, this round I need to take this guy, this round I need to take this guy, this round I need to take this guy. You have a you have like a consensus team, and you wondering why other teams or, or why you losing. These guys got like really great wide receivers because people left them on the board and they just went to a consensus guy. So that's what I mean by that. Uh, Big Will said, hey, it's 100. Appreciate you. There you go, Dynasty Football Key in the house. What's up, bro, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, bro. If you got if you got any free time, man, you're welcome to come up. If you if, if you want to, if not, man, you're busy, you're all good. But yeah, guys, me and him, me and Fantasy Football Key have is, uh, coming up with this model, and I think it's gonna be the best in the game. I'm talking about. And I'm not trying to be on a or anything, be uh, exuberant with this type of information, but I think it's going to be the best, and I'm including football scouts. This is this model that we have. So, all right, so let's move on to my number four guy. My number four guy, is, guys, is going to be Kyle Pitts. Now, listen, I, I agree. I went down. This is one of the guys that I've been off on. You know, I, I always tell people I'm about 70%, 80%. This is one of the guys that I've been wrong by probably like two or three years. I don't care. I don't, I'm not doing it because I don't care. I don't want to be accountable. I am accountable for saying that Kyle Pitts is the top five tight end because he hasn't been. But he, when I watch him, he's elite. He just ain't had the quarterback play. So, guys, I see the game more of a scout. There's probably guys out here that can go to the fantasy guys and tell you who's going to hit just because they're on the fantasy team and they're on the right situation, but they're not as talented as other guys. Um, so, and that's for any player, but there are some players that can play on any team. They're going to be great. But Kyle Pitts is having Kirk Cousins. Yes, Kirk, not Kirk. Kirk, having Kirk Cousins, I believe he's going to be hyper-targeting and he's going to be a top five tight end. I'm willing to take him over guys like Mark Andrews and George Kittle. Even Travis Kelsey, because he has upside. He, this guy's six 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 four, uh, between six four and six six, um, and he can jump ball you. He's fast. I think this guy has the opportunity to have ten receiving touchdowns this year with Kirk Cousins. So I love Kyle Pitts, and I've been on him for the last uh, three years. But I believe his quarterback play has been bad. The coaching that he's had hasn't focused him like they should have. So I look at uh, Kyle Pitts. I'm taking him before Travis Kelsey this year. Uh, moving on to my number three guy. Yes, my number three guy. And this is the guy that I've been on. And people thought I was crazy. Uh, and I'm probably one of the biggest guys on him because I was on him. I've been on him for last since I started my channel. And this is David and Joku. And I was on him before he got his deal. I want to ask y'all this. Tell me one content creator or any scout they said that David Njoku was a top guy before he got his deal a couple years ago. You remember when they gave him that, what, three, four-year deal, $40 million guarantee? I was on him before then because I knew what type of talent. That's how, So, yes, I, can I be wrong within a vacuum? Yes. But am I seeing talent? I see talent. I'm, I'm elite when it comes to seeing talent. I'm not going to never I'm not gonna never tell you a guy that's talented and he sucked. Like, a lot of people tell you some of these guys just because they going number one because he had a lot of stats. In college, I don't care nothing about stats. In college, you don't find guys by stats. In college, you find guys by does their ability translate to the NFL game. And I believe that David and Joker being 6'5, 6'4, 250 pounds that can run, I believe he's a great player. So he now his hands are not as good as Travis Kelsey's route runners are not as good as Travis Kelsey or or even Mark Andrews, but. 
by him getting better because he was a late bloomer, he's coming into his own. And I think David Njoku, guys, is going to be getting hyper-targeted like he did down the stretch. I know Deshaun Watson wasn't the quarterback down the stretch like Joe Flacco was. When Joe Flacco was hyper-targeting. But you have to get this guy the ball. If Deshaun Jackson, or not Jackson, Watson comes in the game and doesn't hyper-target David Njoku, they will move on like they moved on from Russell Wilson. You got to get this guy the ball. You got to get Amari Cooper the ball, and you got to get uh, David Njoku the ball, especially with Nick Chubb having an injury this year. This team's going to pass the ball a little bit more. Now, they're going to they run the ball. They're going to get a running back. Jerome Ford will have an opportunity. They might get a rookie, too. But David Njoku is going to be a top five tight end off his athletic ability. You seen it last year. That was, top, that was a top team when David Njoku was getting focused as the number one option in this team. Now, I'm not saying he's the number one over wide receiver, but he's definitely a high target getter as a tight end, and I'm, and I'm picking him. And I'm picking him. And I've been on him for a long time. More than, David Njoku, man. Da, 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 and I'm unsubscribing. This guy should be riding short, but this guy, don't, he don't know what he's talking about. Look at him, man. Da, 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 da. And then he hit. And everybody, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody want to move on. Yeah, yeah, this guy, yeah. What about yeah, David Njoku? Yeah, TV, yeah, blah, 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 blah. David Njoku. So uh, he's my he, he's one of my top tight ends. Uh let's see, let me see, look at uh, um Harami says he can be tight end one overall. They need to feed him more. I agree. And I think you're talking about Kyle Pitts. I think you're talking about Kyle Pitts. Dude is a monster, right? Facts. Yeah, I got you. I got you, Big Wheel. I'm gonna read them over. Let me go through the last couple of guys, and I'm gonna go read the list back out. I got you, bro, bro. I got to. Thank you, Harambe. Thank you, Harambe. Okay. My number two guy, Sam Laporte. Now, the reason why I'm on Sam LaPorta, I don't think Sam LaPorta, like Sam LaPorta is a good player. He's a good tight end. I have nothing to take away from Sam LaPorta. Um, he's a solid route runner. He don't have anything like he's not like what I would call. I don't think he's the player that Kyle Pitts is, but he don't need to be because he's on the elite offense. There's so many good guys out here that Sam LaPorta get one-on-one -on -one coverage every single time, and he gets – he's – the uh, results from that is him getting a lot of touchdowns and being used to be a tight, a top tight end. He ain't beating double coverage like Mark Andrews or, or um, even Kyle Pitts at times or even um, Travis Kelsey. He's just out there running routes and they double team in the armor rod and they try to take away uh, Jameer Gibbs and they worried about the deep play to um, the, the Williams a couple of times and then Sam LaPorta won a rod open, boom, touchdown. So that's why this guy is elite. He's on a great offense. Sometimes offenses make the player. And I, I always have said this. If you take Patrick Mahomes and put him on the Jets, is he the same player? If we take Patrick Mahomes and the Jets draft him, is he the same player? He might still be in the NFL. He might be still be starting, but he's, he doesn't have three or four Super Bowls. He, he, he's just not the same player. So Sam LaPorta, if he would have went to Atlanta Falcons, he would be struggling just like Kyle Bennett's. So, but he goes to the Detroit Lions, great orchestrated offense. I love this type of offense. I love uh, – we're trying to establish the line of scrimmage. We got a great offensive line. You got to stop our run game. We hit you with the play action. We kill you. And we got a good wide receiver that people have slept on like Amara. So that's why I like Sam LaPorte as the number two. I think you, you should take a number two off the board. Do I think he finishes number two? He could. I mean, I don't – like I said, I don't got no, I'm not biased. I got to give him his respect. I got to put him as number two. I got to give him that guy respect. He played really good last year. So that's why I got him number two. But I would not be surprised if David Njoku or Kyle Pitts finish above him. All right. So, guys, I got, like I said, I got two bonus guys after I'll give you this last, my top tight end this year that I'm taking off the board. And I'm pretty sure all of you know who it is. It's on the thumbnail. Uh, it's Craig McBride. And I know a lot of you might believe, might believe say, well, well, what if Marvin Harrison? I don't care if they draft Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison together. And I, I mean, I said what I said. I don't care who, who they got. 
you don't, you, what you go, oh, with Trey McBride, you ain't that good. I'm going to slide you over now because we got Malik neighbors. Or we, we got Marvin Harrison. So, yeah, we don't need you now, Trey. You hyper target this guy. This guy comes in and kills the last six games of the season. He's out there being elite. Kyler Murray's playing good with him. That's why Kyler Murray's still on the team. Because they wanted to try, they were thinking about getting rid of Colin Murray, especially coming off this injury. But Colin Murray played really well. Why? Because he had Trey McBride, who was eating. And this team, the offensive coordinator came from like a run first tight end type option offense. I, I can't, don't get me to lie, I can't think of the offensive coordinator where he come from, but it was a, like a double tight type scheme. So Trey McBride is going to be targeted. This is a tight end. We ain't talking about a wide receiver. You don't need – you need about eight targets, seven targets to be a top tight end. You don't need 15 like a wide receiver. So I love Trey McBride. I don't care who's there. I don't care who who's there. That's why you can – you listen, You sometimes I understand for certain guys you got to look at the opportunity. But when you're elite – now, I know Trey McGraw was elite like that. When I watched him three or four games, when they started targeting him, and I saw him beating certain guys, safeties and corners, I said, God, the lead. Now, I wasn't on Trey McGraw. He, from the beginning, I wasn't on Trey McGraw like that. But when I watched him, I said, okay, this guy can play. He just didn't get the opportunity early in it as a rookie. So th this year, guys, he's going to be the number two option outside of the wide receivers. Now, if he, can you lead that team? I think he could lead that team in yards. He could be 1,200 yard, eight touchdown tight end. I believe that if he stays healthy. So I love Trey McBride. He's my number one tight end. Yeah, uh, Harami says, Kelsey Pitts and Joker. Okay, yeah, we did that one already. And Steven said, Jake Ferguson, listen, he's a sleeper. He's not only sleeper, he's a sleeper. I believe you can wait late and get Jake Ferguson. And he could finish as uh, I'm not gonna say a top five tight end, but I'm I definitely believe that he could be uh a top twelve tight end, and that's great. Pat. That's a good enough value for you to win your league. And you waited late, and you got studs at other positions, guys. A lot of times when you draft the players, it's about opportunity cost. So I'm not gonna draft a guy that's iffy when I can go and wait late and then get another guy and stack my team. Because I'm gonna have a better opportunity cause waiting late to do it. So I'm not gonna go take a guy just to take him high. Oh, I got this guy. And then you could have got like a Jake Ferguson, and he's only gonna be a two-point difference. Only a two-point difference. So can I see somebody waiting late to get Jake Ferguson instead of taking Travis Kelsey? Yes, I can see that. I'm not saying he's he gonna be better than Travis Kelsey, but if Travis Kelsey doesn't be six or seven points better than him, then you messed up on the opportunity cost. That's why I love macro, uh, macro economics, uh, macro and, and micro economics. That's what they teach you. It's about opportunity because spending money at the right time to make more money later on, right? Instead of spending a lot of money in, in the beginning just to try to get it back real, real quick when you miss the opportunity cause for, for a good value flip. And I believe Jake Ferguson could be a great value flip. Robin says, TV, what do you think will happen with Dawkins show? Is he going to be safe tight end this year? No, I'm not touching him. If he be good, he'd be good. I'm not touching him. There's too many weapons. You got Tankdale, you got Nico, you got Stephon Diggs, and you also going to probably have a couple other guys there. I'm not touching him. Now, he could have a couple games. Any tight end can have a game or two. You can stream them, but I'm not drafting him. I would not draft. I'm not drafting him as a top 12 tight end at all. So I'm going to talk about two bonus guys. I'm going to have two bonus guys for you. The next one is Dolphin Kincaid. Dolphin Kincaid. Dolphin Kincaid, now he didn't make the top five, but he was, he, I want to talk about him as a bonus where he could make the top five uh, uh, tight end list. He could be better than Travis Kelsey. That's why they got rid of Stephon Diggs. This team want to get tougher. So when you get tougher, usually you, you run a lot of double tight, double tight end type uh, teams. And the play action going to work with the tight end. He's going to be on linebackers or coming behind the linebackers in a crosser type game. You see, you play bad. You, when you play action, that tight end, he going in a block a little bit, and then he go out for a pass. And usually the linebackers, you cannot guard that because you have to respect the run. And so that tight end already on your heel. He already got you on your heels because you worried about the, all the window dressing behind the line of scrimmage. And that's what they call it. They call it window dressing. And you you looking, you looking, you looking at your keys, you're looking at the fullback. 
Daniel, Dr. TK behind me, Josh Allen, first down. And that's what Dr. TK is going to do. And that's why I love James Cook. Neither here nor I love James Cook and I love Dr. TK. This is going to be a, a tough team this year. They want to get tougher. They don't want to be cute. Kansas City, Andy Reid has been cute his whole career. And the NFL changed to a kind of a cute offense. And that's why Andy Reid has been elite for the last five or six years. Because the, this is what um, Andy Reid has always did, even when he was in Philly. Now that you can't hit guys a certain type of way, his offense is easy. But you still can win when, as a tough team. Detroit, that's why Detroit was good. San Francisco was good. Baltimore, these teams are tough. So I believe uh, Buffalo want to become a tough team, establish the line of scrimmage with the run game. That way I can hit you deep. And Josh Allen won't have as many as turnovers because it's the, the uh, wide receivers are getting open more. It's more space. I'm not dropping back 40 times a game trying to win the game like I'm a superhero. That's hard to do that. Now, you got to do that sometimes, but you shouldn't be doing that 60% of the year. You should be doing that maybe 30% of the year when, depending on who you're playing. So that's Love Dalton Kincaid this year. I think he's going to be a really good uh, tight end. Uh, catch a lot of balls. Great back. Great back. Uh, Robert said, that's what I was thinking also. Just curious that the test and passing game will be legit. I agree. I agree. Sports Dr. TV, just so uh, I know when you do the sleep on mock draft, I need to register. I have had sleeper account. I have had a sleeper account for a few years. I just want to make sure I understand. Thanks. Yeah, bro, bro, let's go ahead and make sure you sign in now. I already have the account and all that ready. That way, when you click the link, it's going to take you straight into the mock draft. So go ahead and make sure you register now. Everything is good. You got a, you on a sleeper. And then when you, when you click the link, you should it should take you straight to the mock draft. Okay, guys, let's get to this last guy. Appreciate everybody being here. Make sure you hit the like button, guys, and subscribe to the channel. This is Cutting Edge Content. And I believe this is cutting edge content. See, a lot of people, guys, you know, you, you look at my views, and I'm, I'm going to stand on this. I'm not going to sit here and act like I talk like Brian Gumble, or I talk like, um, I would say, uh, Stephen A. Smith. These guys' vernacular is extravagant. But when it comes to football, I'm second to none. And I'm sorry if y'all if you get offended because I don't want to be humble. I'm I'm not being humble when it comes to that. I'm a very humble person, but when it comes, well, I've been playing football since I've been all I'm 37 years old. I've been playing football since 31 years. I've been watching the game 28 years, breaking the game down 25 years. It was since I've been 13, 14, I've been breaking the game out. They used to call me Coach Goody just to be funny, right? Because I always, you know, I was very dynamic. I, I jumped off sides probably a couple of times in my, my career because I was very intellectual to the game. So I know the game. That's why I'm cutting edge content. I look at the game that way. My players are hits. Do I be sitting around and give y'all all, all the lives and like everybody else? No. And I'm not saying they go back. These are great channels. But my channel ain't second to none when it comes to knowledge and the players. I stand on that. So I ain't trying to, I don't want, I ain't trying to whisper no, trying to trick people into no likes. I ain't trying to trick people into anything. I stand on, you take my players that I've been on, and you, I'm, and you tell me your players that you've been on for the last three years and see who, who numbers are better. See who numbers are better. I told people that I was taking CJ Stroud late, uh, late last year in some redraft. People said I was crazy. I want Josh Allen, and I stood, and I stood on Lamar. So I don't care nothing about no damn views when I know I'm putting out good content because I'm just going to keep grinding. That's all I can do, right? And I'm not worried about that because I know that's why I have – I'm where I'm at with a second job. That's why my channel is where it's at. And I appreciate y'all. Y'all guys, y'all y'all respect my content, and I appreciate that. Y'all understand. y'all, Because I know I don't uh, do all the things and all the stuff that the big-time channels got, I, I don't have that, and I'm okay with that. I just, now, when if I start giving y'all bad people, I, st I quit. If I say good enough, I mean, I can't make it pretty and I'm missing. No, but as long as my players don't keep hitting, I'm going to keep saying I'm one of the best. I'm one of the best. Um, 
Sport Dog. Thanks. Anytime, bro, bro. Uh, Zach says, can you rank these 10 running backs? Yeah, bro, I'll rank, I'll rank them in a few. Let me, um, I'll, get, I'll try my best at, off the spot, off the dome. But let me uh, talk about this last guy. This last guy, man, is going to be Isaiah Lightman. Isaiah Lightman. I believe that Isaiah Lightman, they're going to be running a lot of double tight formations in Baltimore, especially with Derrick Henry being there. And Isaiah Lightman is going to be used more. That's why I'm fading Mark Andrews. I'm not touching Mark Andrews. I'm not touching George Kittle. George Kittle can be open. He could be solid, but I'm not drafting these guys early like we've done in the last, what, five years? These guys are older. It's it's time for a, a turnover for these young guys to start hitting. So I like I feel likely to be a top 12 tight end easily. You see, last year when Mark Andrews went down, even when Mark Andrews was playing, I feel likely had a, a few decent games. And they're going to use him more because Mark Andrews is older. You don't want to get him hurt. You want to make sure he's healthy for you and playoff games. But I feel like he's going to be having some good games, guys. He's a great back. He's a great streamer. So, like, after your draft and redraft, I would definitely stash him. And if I'm in a dynasty league, I would definitely uh, buy low on him and stash him. Mark Andrews is not going to be there uh, that long anymore. He's getting older. So you want to be able to get the next wave of these weapons and it's going to be Isaiah Light. So let's see here. Zach says, can you rate these 10 running backs? One to 10. Jameer Gibbs. Derrick Henry. Devon A. Chain, Richard White, Alvin Kamar, Josh Jacobs, James Cook, Isaiah Pacheco, Joe Mixon. All of them are, are solid running backs. Hey, guys, there's not a bad running back out there. You just got to, they just got to have an opportunity. David Singletary had, had, had a, two or three great weeks. Why? Because he, he was, it was an opportunity. There's no bad running backs. It's all about who, who's going to get the more of the work. And with Derrick Henry, I got him up there early because he's going to be a goal line running back on a great team. I got Jameer Gibbs up there early because he's going to be, uh, he's going to be, he's on a great team with a great offensive line and he's going to have a lot of exposing plays. The other guys are good too. They're gonna have good weeks. They're gonna have four Derrick Henry and, and uh Jameer Gibbs some weeks because they're gonna have it's gonna be the opportunity. Depends on what's going on with injuries. Depends on how they what team are they playing. So to me, guys, I'm going wide receivers early, and then I'm stashing a bunch of running backs. That way, whoever's hitting, I'm gonna put them in the game and play them. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you because running backs are they just uh they not they I wouldn't say they jags, but they don't people the NFL really don't care about them except for about two or three of them. The rest of them, they're just trying to plug them in when they need somebody. Plug them in when they need somebody. Zach said, do you like Mark? Do you do you like to draft Marquise Brown in late rounds? Yes. I I, I mean I'm not drafting him like that, but he's not a bad pickup. He's part of Kansas City. And, and even part of this part of Kansas City, man, is gonna put gonna have some good weeks. That's just part of it. So yes, he's a okay. He's he's a good wide receiver to take as a wide receiver three or a flex play. Sports dog says just so you know, my sleep account is is withstanding victory. If that if that makes any difference, okay. That way, I know you if you in there. I see you if you in there. If you get into the mock draft, yep. So like I said, guys, um. I just want y'all to know that I, in my channel, you know, a lot of you might say, well, TV, do this. You can grow more and do this. i um, not saying that the, all the bells and whistles will not help and make people, because a lot of people like to watch content just because of what it looks like. They don't really care what you say. If you look familiar to them, 
if it, if it if it's like the rest of the channel, they'll subscribe. If you say something that's edgy, because you know how many people unsubscribe to my channel when I said fade Jamar Chase and Joe Barrow. I still don't, I still wait for those people to come out. The ones that told me that I was crazy, that I was gonna lose a lot of subscribers because I said fade Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase last year. That I said I would take Armor Rock before Jamar. I didn't did I, now did I take Jamar in a couple of weeks? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. So I know, and I have a couple friends that say, TD man, you don't you don't gotta explain yourself in your lives. Well, that's who I am. I'm the little engine that could. People all my life been told me I couldn't do do anything. That's why, I, you know, that's why I do a lot of life lessons in my fantasy football content. That's who I am. And I'm sometimes I'm like, okay, should I come over here and just clock work? No. YouTube is about my personality. And my personality says, people said I couldn't do it. People say I'm crazy. People said I wouldn't win championships and all that. And I did it. So I'm not, I'm not, when I'm, when I'm talking to y'all about this, don't, don't think that I think that I'm better than you because I'm not better than you. I'm not better than anybody. But when somebody comes and try to act like my channel and disrespect my channel and say, well, look at this and you did some of this. I, like I said, I just, I just want, I just want to be, I just want my work to stand for itself. I'm competitive. Not saying I got the best channel. I don't think I got the best channel. I do think I got great data. I do think I got great players. Yes, I appreciate that, Robbie. Big Wilson, good job, sir. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Right, so judge a man not by his bells and whistles, but by the content of his channel. I agree. And, you know, my content could be, you know, guys, I understand that, um, and I've been like this my whole life, man. I, some, a lot of my teachers, because I'm country, but when it comes to the knowledge in my in my head, I, I'm, I'm obsessive. I have, uh, what you call it, obsessive personality. Whatever I'm on, I'm on it. So, I just, listen, the bells and whistles do matter. I'm not, I would never disrespect another channel talking about Oh, they just got all the bells and whistles. That's why they're growing. That's a hater. I ain't hating on no other channel. These channels are great. I listen to them all the time. They got, they got good content. They got they pick good players. But you know, I'm not going to sit there and say there's a way difference between the players that I pick because I'm trying to give you the players that's going to make a difference. I'm not going to sit here and try to sell you Justin Jefferson. And I ain't got to sell you Tyreek Hill, but I do. I did have to sell people Tyreek Hill two or three years ago. I had to sell it to them. People thought I was crazy. TV, Tyreek Hill? He, but 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 he give you like eight points sometimes. I said I don't care. That's how you win the fantasy league. I don't need you to be consistent twenty points all the time. I need about four, five, forty, fifty point games. I know I'm gonna win those weeks. That's what's gonna get me in there. Arami says we ride. Yes, sir. I know. Hey guys, I'm gonna tell y'all something about. The fantasy good sports army. Y'all are cutting edge, and you get and you and you want the content. You you don't you know you're not big on. Hey, give me give me um Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and CD Lamb. Y'all like no. Well, what's gonna make the difference, CD? What who who should I pick in the type of content? That's to me when you are in a savvy league. That's what makes the difference. It's not the top guy. Now I'm going in my draft guide. I'm going to mention the top guys to tell you who I like. But I was telling people Tyree Hill for the last two years, and they was like, ah, he should maybe it's the late of the first, the end of the first round, end of the first round. Now everybody like, yeah, I'm should I, I'm taking a one or two, maybe three. Zero RB, man, zero RB. That's why you're gonna lose. Now everybody zero RB. People are getting off of that heavy running back because that running back stuff, man. If you if you lose your running back, you look usually you lose the lead because you can't because you can get all the opportunity costs that you gave up with all those high end players. You took a running back. Now listen, I think it's okay to take Breach Hall first this year. I think it's okay. I think because I mean if he gets hurt, I'm okay with that. This guy's in his third year, young running back on a on a team that needs him. So you got to go and squeeze that for what it's worth. CMC is a great running back. I'm just like, why would I do that, take that type of stock when 
he's like in the league for eight, nine years, been used a lot the last two years. I'm just don't want him. I'm not saying that like he's a terrible player. I just don't I don't want to go with that. When Bree Tall gets in the league six, seven years after 300 carries per year, I'm gonna move on from him and go to the next rookie. When Bree B. John Robinson get 30 carries and uh for like two or three years in a row, I'm gonna move on from him. Running backs, but but wide receivers that can be 32 years old. Look at look at uh Keenan Allen, look at Stefan Diggs. These guys are older wide receivers and they can still play. Look at Devontae Adams. You ain't gonna get no 33 year old Devon uh running back and, and he's still gonna be good. So wide receivers, I like drafting those guys. I can rely on these guys. You can it's hard to rely on a running back. Only ones I'm willing to rely on are young guys like uh under 25. Like Saquon, this is probably Saquon last year that I'm willing to probably draft him. Like far as early. This is probably his last year. See, I'm, I'm giving y'all cutting edge content right here. A lot of people don't tell y'all that type of stuff. I've been on this for a long time. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm going to try to go live later today. Um, Guys, get ready for that. Phenom Fonda, it's, I think it's going it's, it's going to be tremendous. Um, I, I just did the rookie wide receivers, and um, I'm going to display that information to y'all. Let y'all know who's like top on there, and it's, it's some surprises. Then I'm going to give you this. this easy. Malik Neighbors is at the top. Malik Malik Neighbors is at the top. Um, but he's that doesn't mean he's my favorite. I'm, look, the score is going to be the score. I'm not going to try to manipulate the score for guys that I like. And I might, it might be a guy that's like number one on my list, but I might not have him as my number one. Will I draft him? Most definitely. Ain't no such thing as a bad player in fantasy. It's all about opportunity. If you take Puka Nakua and you put him on the Jets with Zach Wilson, he's not Puka Nakua. You take Gary Wilson and put him on the Rams, he's the best. He could be the best wide receiver in the NFL. That's how it works in fantasy sometimes, not all the time. It just depends on the situation. Nothing is permanent. It ain't no easy equation when it comes. It's like math. There's so many different ways to get to the answer. It don't mean this is just one trick pony and this is what you do every single time. So that's that's the difference. Like I, Marvin Harrison probably is not going to be um, high because he didn't work out in the on combine. And um, it's just a lot. It's just hard to get the data that I need on him. But I still like him. And I'm still taking him probably as the first or probably the first wide receiver off the board in any draft uh, for a rookie. That's just that's just that's just common sense. But that I mean Brian Thomas is my favorite. Brian Thomas is my favorite. Arami says, TV, thanks as always. Anytime, bro, bro. Big Will says, I've noticed that when running backs get injured during the game, he's likely out. But when a wide receiver get injured mid-game, he usually goes back in either to the ball or to be a decoy. Regardless, he's still on the field. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Guys, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. This is Kennedy Edge Content. All right, guys, when we get ready to get out of here, y'all guys be safe. Peace. I'm burning up. Yeah, let's talk some business. Ain't no money. I ain't showing up. Don't know how to act. A bunch of country niggas pulling up. Okay, turn me up. Now they say they want that country shit. Okay, now turn me up. Now they see I be that energy. I make them turn me up. Yeah, I know they trying to finish me, but it just turn me up. Turn me up, Fresh to death on camouflage. Gotta keep a foot up on their necks because they might sabotage. I ain't come for peace. I brought the mask. About to terrorize. Step. If you a hating nigga, keep that bullshit to yourself. Get my bop on you niggas. Don't never question if I'm a real nigga. I get a lot for you niggas. Bitch, they thought I was finished, but I got a lot for you niggas. No drown on them niggas. I'm the bra on them niggas. I'm the hottest in the business. Okay, put me in the me. I can tell you used to lame niggas that ain't this. Think you coming up a bag, you ain't getting shit. You say wanna fuck, but now she see a nigga lit.
for life in this bitch. Okay, turn me up. They don't want no smoke. I'm 